Hello friends! Today we are going to make coil pots using templates. The first thing you're going to need is a cardboard sheet to draw your template. Once you're happy, you're going to cut your template in half. And then I like to make these little marks through it just to make my cutting a little bit easier. I'm going to cut out the inside of it so I'm just left with the outside. And then I'm going to cut the bottom off so it will lay flat. These are the few of the materials that you are going to need. A wedging board or canvas. You can attach that to your board just using some tape. Um, you're going to need a board by itself also, some paper towels, a banding wheel, a rolling pin, a feddling knife, and of course slip with a paintbrush to apply that slip. There are a few other tools that you will need, but we will go over those as we get to them. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to roll out your base. So you want to roll out a small slab about a quarter of an inch. I like to use this compass, please grab them out of the clay drawer only to measure out the size that you would like so you have a perfect circle. Then you're going to score and of course you're going to slip. So once you have scored and slipped your base, it is time to roll our first coil. So this process will be repeated for every single coil that you make. You're first going to start out with a block of your freshly wedged clay and then you'll see here I am making it into a log. So the reason I want to make it into a log, it is just much easier to roll a coil that's, into, that's in a log versus into a cube. So um, I'm using my entire hand from the base of my palm all the way to the top of my fingers. So I'm spreading my fingers as far as they can go to get as much surface area on that coil as possible. You can see throughout this video, I do have some issues with my sleeves. They keep falling down. So that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind when you are doing your coils. I am not just working directly on the table because I don't want to have my coil get stuck and um, peel apart on me. So I'm using a piece of canvas uh, and I have it taped to just a board. You could use a wedging board also that works pretty well. You'll see I'm fixing up some tiny little cracks. Uh, they were not enough to cause any integrity issues with my coil. They're just very, very small surface cracks. So I'm just making sure to make to moisten that up and spread those out. So if I get a flat edge, I'm just going to smash that down just a little bit just to help me make that round just once again. I'm going to smash my ends. I like to do this personally because it just helps to make sure that end is really nice and secure to my coil pot. And my last step is to score. Since I am slipping the base, I am not going to slip my, my coil. I'm either going to slip one coil um, but I'm not going to slip both, but I am going to score both no matter what. Whenever you're scoring, you really want to make sure you're roughing, roughening up that surface to allow that slip and that clay to intertwine and connect together almost like Velcro. Here I'm just making sure that that coil is about the thickness of my pointer finger. A little bit thicker is not going to hurt, but you want to make sure it is not thicker than your thumb. If you do have excess coil, you can just wrap that up in a damp paper towel just to make sure it does not dry out. My next step is then to start stacking my coils on top of one another. So I'm going to start by stacking it onto my base, and then if I need to, I can coil around multiple times if my coil is long enough. I want to make sure that I'm smearing my coils into one another and into my base. Just to help my finger from getting tired, I like to use just a wooden modeling tool um, just to smear that clay together. Uh, and then I can just smear it smooth with my finger. Once I feel like everything is connected nicely, I'm then going to use my template. And I'm just going to make sure that everything is stacking on top of each other correctly and I'm following that curvature. If you find yourself with a little bit of a dip, just like I did, Please don't worry, all you're going to do is you're going to make a little mini coil and you're going to score it, slip it on there and then you will be good as new with a nice clean edge. Once you have a nice bowl started, I just like to use a rubber rib 
and just smooth everything out to make sure all my connections are good. Please do not forget to continue to use your template just to make sure everything is curving how you would like. If you start to run out of class time, just take a couple paper towels and just moisten just the top so you make sure that top coil remains um, nice and wet. You don't want it to be soft and wet, just a little bit damp. You never want to put a lot of excess water onto the bottom of your bowl though. You would like that to stay a little bit of a leather hard so it can support all of the weight that's going to be on top of it. And as always, please be sure that you are always keeping your projects in an airtight plastic bag without any holes. If you come back the next day and you realize that, oh no, one of, a part of my pot is not curving how I want, don't worry, you're just going to grab a wooden spoon and you're going to do something called tampering. You're going to very lightly, using the back of the wooden spoon, just tap on that area that you need to be more round and that will help that clay just to move in that direction that you need. You do not want to add too much pressure because you don't want to cause any cracking to your clay at this point. If your pot curves in like mine does at the top, I'm going to start adjusting my coils inward. As you can see in this image, I am just putting them on the inside of that bowl and that's going to help to give me that inward curvature. Once I have that, I can start smearing at that angle that I need, always using my template after to make sure I am holding true to that curve. Just channel your inner dory and just keep checking, just keep checking. LOL, I know no one has ever said that in the history of ever, but just remember to constantly use your template just to make sure that your curves are going in and out where you would like them to be. So once you have the shape of your pot, congratulations, you are halfway there. So now you are going to cut off that top flat with a feddling knife and a banding wheel just to make sure you can constantly twirl it around. In the video you see above, I'm just very gently pushing that knife, keeping it super flat um, through the very top of that top coil. So I'm just cutting off the very top of it. I'm not cutting into it or making any designs at this point. So congratulations, you have a finished pot at this point, but your surface is looking a little gnarly. So we have to roughen it up using something called a rasp. So now a rasp is a tool with little holes in it, almost like a cheese grater. And you're going to use that just to roughen up the surface of your pot, and that's gonna help to get rid of any fingerprints or uneven areas on your pot to make sure everything is nice and smooth. All of those little pieces that are falling off of your pot, don't worry, we are going to put those back into the reclaim slip um, and they will be used again. So we can use a, both a small and a large rasp depending on the surface area that we need to um, remove. So once you have finished using the rasp on your entire piece, you're gonna go back in with a damp sponge. You wanna use a damp sponge that's going to soften up all of those peaks. So then once you have one over with a sponge, you're gonna go over the entire pot with a rubber rib, and that's gonna help just to get rid of those little peaks and valleys and make everything nice and smooth. So once you have your pot all smooth, you are then going to think about your surface design. I decided to go with a sprig um, of just a mold that I created using pearls. All a sprig is is just a textured piece of clay that you then attach to your surface. I then went ahead and trimmed off all of the excess and then I'm just going to apply it onto my pot. I just wanted my sprigs right on the rim and in this video you can see I'm just using that wooden modeling tool once again to just smear that, those sides down. Obviously this is scored and slipped, so I know it's not going to come off. For my service design, I decided to just go with underglazes. I love underglazes because what you see is what you get for the most part. So um, they just go right onto your greenware as we had learned about previously. 
For my actual design, I was inspired by uh, contemporary female artist Yoyoi Kusama. You know, I talk about her a lot. And of course, I decided to go with her most iconic polka dots. So I divided my pot into four sections and I did different colored polka dots on each section. And then I did a different color contrasting for the background. So once this project is bisque fired, I then plan on glazing the inside with um, this Jungle Gems Northern Lights Glaze and then applying a clear glaze to everything else. Hi friends, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can always email me um, at my email below, mkelly at crlions.org. I cannot wait to see what you create.